record. There we go. Good morning and happy new year, fire catchers. This is the first fire catchers chat of 2020. And we have today Elizabeth Schott. She is on, we're on opposite ends of the of the coast. I'm on the west coast. She's on the east coast, North Carolina. Welcome, Elizabeth, and happy new year to you. Hi, happy new year. Hello, fire catchers. <laughs> We were just discussing how she um, she loves her Christmas tree and it's still up. So I think that this is great. If you're catching this much later or at another time, it is actually New Year's Day that we are chatting. And so it's completely um, normal to have a Christmas tree up still. And so welcome. Um, now we're talking about worship flags and I was really attracted to Elizabeth's story because she had said something to me that how worship flags has actually impacted her relationship with God. So um, without uh, further ado, I'm gonna ask you, can you tell me what, what was the attraction or what, was, what brought you into using worship flags? So it's kind of an interesting story. Um, I was doing some volunteer work with a ch our church. Um, um, we staff an angel tree where we um, host families. Um, and this was directly after the last hurricane, Florence, and had really impacted our community. And I had a lady come up to me and I was taking a family's portraits. And she said to me, you're supposed to have a worship flag ministry. And I was like, I, I don't know what worship flags are. What's the flag ministry? And she said, well, you're supposed to have one. And so I, I said, well, why don't you come and join our church and start one and you can teach me what this is. And she just repeated herself a third time and then just kind of dropped it. And so it kind of, she said it so adamantly to me, it was almost like a prophetic statement. I went home and I started Googling what is of flag ministry and Catch the Fire Worship came up and several other um, well-known flag makers came up and I started watching the videos and I'm probably gonna cry saying this because it was so beautiful to watch people worship in that way. I had never seen it before. I had heard of praise dance and, and enjoyed that at several women's um, conferences and things like that before. But it's the first time I'd ever really heard of worship flagging. And I just was mesmerized by the videos. And it just spoke to my heart on such a deep level that I can't even put it into words. And so I started like watching hundreds of hours of these flagging videos, how to flag and, and what this is. And finally, I got brave enough. And I said, well, I'll go ahead and order a set. Um, and so I, I ordered my first um, set of flags from Catch the Fire um, Worship and just started very badly trying to learn how to do this from YouTube videos. And um, it just really increased the joy that I had. I just found that um, it just touched my heart in such a deep place that I can't even, it's really hard to put into words. But, um, and after that, I just, continued to do it and started to record some of um, my flagging. And it was more to try to figure out if I was doing everything correctly, the same moves that other people were doing. Um, but then when I would wash it back, I would still feel um, that same annoying. And um, I started posting on Facebook and, and folks started sending me private messages. That's so beautiful. That really touched my heart. And I found out that I was gaining a ministry very quickly without even knowing how to flag. <laughs> so. I, so I, I love your story is so inspiring because I think a lot of us and, and even moving forward into the, the new year, I think this is a really great message for the new year because a lot of us have had prophetic words or words of encouragement, um, if maybe if that's not your language, you know, prophecy or prophetic words, um, or even just if even if they're just encouraging words, they are words from the Lord that you are to move into something. And what but a lot of us, and myself included, have have received words and then we we let them die with us. Like we don't actually do it. And and what your story is inspiring is that you got that word you didn't even understand it but you're like i'm gonna investigate it and to me that's kind of like 
uh, reminds me of Moses investigating the burning bush. Like he could have passed him by, passed it by. And, and he didn't, and he investigated it and, and he went on to lead an entire nation. And so you have this ministry of haphazardly perhaps, but again, it also speaks to other fire catchers or other worshipers, flagging worshipers that it's, and I say that it's it's not even necessarily the 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 practiced flow of the movements, but it, but it's the anointing that is on you that actually makes the difference. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke, and uh, and you just really stepped out into it. So can you can you tell me what was your relationship with God before, and then what has what what have you what kind of revelations have you had about the Lord specifically? Um, revelation about him and his character through worship likes. Can you answer that question? I could do my best. Um, so I felt like that I was on this journey anyway, learning to hear from the Lord and learning to hear his voice, recognize um his voice and respond to it. Um I had been taking some prophetic courses and um was learning how to recognize God's voice. Um, and so I'm already a part of my church's worship team. Um, I sing in the praise choir. I'm not on mic. I'm not one of the, the ones up front, but just more kind of a supporting member. Um, I'm not even the one brave enough to raise my hands in worship. So I find it very interesting that God chose me to lift my hands in worship with flagging because I'm not a hand raiser. I just I haven't been raised that way. I'm coming from a very conservative um, Baptist background. That's not something that you do. Um, my church is Baptist that I attend now, but um, we're a lot freer in our worship. Um, they don't have a flag ministry yet. Um, I'm hoping one day that I'll get to do that. Um, I did get the opportunity to minister um, to our seniors during one of their banquets. So that was nice. It was an open door and, and the church leadership welcomed me to do that. So that was fun. Um, but as far as my relationship with God, I feel like that um, I'm able to worship him and understand the Holy Spirit on another level with flagging. It's like getting your whole body into worship. It's, it just touches a place in my heart that I have a hard time putting into words. Um, I'm not sure if I'm doing a very good job about this, but I, I feel like that when I'm in the flow with flagging, that God is speaking to me and I'm ministering to his heart and he's ministering to mine. I think you actually explained that really well. I love that um, that you that you said that. He, I mean, he take, takes a Baptist. He took a Mennonite. I'm Mennonite, and dancing was like a sin. So we just don't dance at all. So how am I supposed to have this ministry? And how are you? He's given you this ministry. Like he really does take it. It's like also like Gideon. You know, like who am I? Like I'm just this little guy. <laughs> can't can't do it. Um. So I, I just, I love what you've said. And even, I mean, kind of our tagline is there are times when words cannot, when you can't express with words, um, your worship. So like mu movement and color really takes over. It, ta it, it's, it, it is able to speak out of the overflow of, of your devotion to the Lord. And so you don't need words and, and the colors can speak for themselves or the movements can speak for themselves. And as you, work and flow with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit moves you uh, and it is a blessing and an, uh, to others. And I find that interesting with your Baptist church, they're open. Um, can you actually share with the fire catchers or anyone who's watching what you're, how you, you, now you know you, so here's the question. You're walking into your ministry, you're walking into your anointing and you are accepting the fact that God is actually bringing you into this. Now there are some that feel can maybe feel entitled to their ministry and then they're frustrated when their church doesn't recognize it or or actually respond to it or invite it. Can you um, talk about your thought process and how you've kind of reconciled that and, and where your heart is in, in terms of honoring leadership but also knowing that you have this call? Um, that's a very good question, um, and it's something that I think a lot of flaggers probably struggle with. Um, 
for me, um, it's always about respecting and showing submission to the um, leadership that God has placed in charge of your church. And so I don't feel like that, that um, getting into conflict with someone over um, whether or not flagging should be part of worship is appropriate. I feel like that um, you should practice and um, make yourself ready for if that opportunity presents. And so if that opportunity is not available right now, what other avenues can you use to um, for flagging ministry? For example, I frequently invite the children in my neighborhood who may or may not attend a church to come and flag with me. And that's something that they really enjoy. Um, I've been able to go out and flag in public on the beach and things like that. Um, so there's other avenues and other ways. Um, and then starting the YouTube channel, you know, um, has been something that I, I did primarily because I wanted to honor um, the people who produce the music and do that in an ethical way. I felt like that that was the most appropriate way to do that. Um, given input from all the fire catchers and other um, worship um, flaggers as well. So, um, so I feel like that um, if you're in a season of preparation, then you prepare. You prepare your heart, you prepare your talent, you hone the skill or lack of skill, like in my case, but um, that you, um, you do your best to, um, to be ready for that time, if that makes sense. That makes, I think that you said that really well, you, you prepare. It's, it's a season of preparation. And I think, I know that when I started flagging in 2010, there wasn't really much out there. I mean, now there's still not a lot out there, but, but there is like a hundred times more than what there was. And and uh, people just weren't doing it outside. And I know that I also couldn't do it in a church. Uh, there was no room. And, and quite frankly, even if, I don't know about your Baptist church, but a lot of the old, you know, the churches that have been around for a long time, their sanctuaries are not physically set up for flagging because flags take space and room. And these, these solid pews that ha are in churches, in a lot of the traditional churches, they... I mean, that's just a very practical aspect that they have to honor. And so we, I know that I started just worshiping outside and started posting uh, photos outside. And I, I see, um, I see a lot more doing that. Like, yeah, you're not confined. Worship is not, I think what the Lord is actually teaching us is that worship is not confined to church, to inside four building, like four walls into in a building. Worship, we are the church. And so wherever we worship, um, we, we can worship anywhere. And quite honestly, it, it's such a beautiful form of worship that it's not offensive to those that watch or those that maybe witness. Even if it's not meant for them, they can benefit, right? And I love the fact that you've ordered, that you, uh, at worship with the children. I know that you ordered, you You were one of the lucky ones that got some children's <laughs> flags on the last sale. <laughs> uh, but you got, so you got them. So what would you tell, uh, what would you say, a piece of advice to anyone that is new to worship flagging? What would you say is, uh, how, what would you, how would you encourage them uh, in their, in their anointing? I would say just pick up the flags and get started um, that don't feel confined by your um, lack of talent or um, whether or not you have a dance background. You know, if God's calling you to this, he's going to give you the skill to do it in a way that um, that honors him. And you know, everybody, what I've noticed after hours of watching all the flag videos is that everyone comes into their own style and it's all beautiful and it's all worship. Um, one of the things I love about flagging is that there's no cultural barriers as well. You know, um, we're able to cross language barriers. We're able to, to cross um, cultural barriers and I was thinking about this morning and, and, and mentally preparing for 
I was going to say to you today, um, just thinking about how, um, you know, every culture has some form of dance um, as worship. And so it's a, a way to connect with other people on that heart to heart level through movement. Um, and just the beauty of the flags invites other people to come in. So, so my advice would be, don't be nervous about it. Just get out there, you know, um, just give it a try <laughs> and, and let God do the rest. Holy Spirit's going to be with you, teaching you what to do. So Thank you so much for that. I mean, that was great encouragement. Elizabeth, I have, in, I have entirely delighted to get to know you and you were just, you were such an encourager in the group. And, and you, if you're in the fire catchers group, you probably recognize Elizabeth Schott's name because she is very much an encourager. She posts and she comments and she is active. She's active in other flagging groups as well. And just, you are such a, um, you're such a gift, your gift to the community, your gift to the body, and you're just definitely a gift to the Lord. So may I pray for you before we close? Absolutely. Thank you. Father, I thank you for the connection that, that Elizabeth has, has gained with, with your heart because that she said, yes, she entered into a promise that you had for her and that you, she, she, she said yes to it and that you are making space for her gift. I ask that you would um, teach her more about the anointing. I pray that she would feel uh, more and more confident that you would give her more and more skills, more and more grace and beauty in her dance, that she would become practiced and, and discerning in it. I pray that her discernment as she flags and worships grows, that she is as she worships outside or in, regionally that you are giving, that she's actually doing something in the heavenlies, that she is, uh, that there's a regional call on her, that she, uh, that her worship breaks the, um, it's the anointing that breaks the, the yoke and the anointing on her father, just increase that exponentially. I pray that as she brings in children into this ministry and teaches them and just has fun with them, that they, that they just enjoy the play of dancing before the Lord, dancing for the feet of the, of the father and, and on the throne as we dance in the, in the, in the worship room of heaven and um, give her greater finances, um, bless her in every aspect of her life. I pray that in relationships that she has that are, that are, um, that are strained, I just pray uh, for reconciliation and peace, that there would be peace in her, in her heart and shalom over all aspects of her life as she just trusts you, walks in you with you, and responds to your voice um, through worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Okay.